I really didn't know what it takes to get over an injury, especially a stress fracture where I had a rod put into my shin at that time. So I really didn't know what it was going to take. That was my first time being injured and not knowing exactly what it takes to, to overcome that and uh, get back to an elite level. Um, it took me a couple of years, but yeah, I'm back. Jimmy, when you were here, you got a chance to build a really good rapport with Casey and Dion and Jeremy in, in terms of what you were talking about from, from recovery. Mm -hmm. uh, was that something that was, was a factor for you in, in making your decision that you did have such a good relationship? Uh, no, not really. That wasn't really a factor for me. He uh, Health-wise, I've, I've, I've grown to know how to take care of myself now and uh, know how to do preventative things that I didn't know how to do that last time I was here, which was, what, seven years ago? Sheesh. Um, yeah, but, yeah, that was, that was a long time ago. But, uh, yeah, I've, I've, that wasn't a, a selling point for me, no. What, what were the factors for you in terms of uh, signing uh, I mean, the city. Uh, it's a great city. Um, one thing I did love about uh, Dallas when I was here last time is the city. It's a great city, great weather, great people. I love the Southern hospitality. Um, and also, uh, just the basketball-wise, uh, just uh, starting playing basketball and starting on the team was very important to me. Well, that's not the last time you heard the bell, you won for the NBA Towers. Tell us about how you can you know, talk to your team and your teammates and tell them what it takes to win a Towers. Uh, I mean, you can tell anybody what it takes. Um, it's more about the implementation of, uh, of, of really putting it into these young buckaroos about how how serious it is and, and, and what it really takes. Um, but obviously, last year you guys made it to the Western Conference Finals, so you got definitely got a taste of it, but those finals are, are different. Speaking of the Western Conference Finals, Western Conference Semifinals, you were there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talk about that game seven. Uh, I mean, shoot, yeah, they, they beat us by 40, so I mean, ain't nothing you can really say about that, really. Loss, fair and square. Was what was watching them and playing against them in that series? How much did that factor into your thought process about where about coming? Uh, it definitely. It, it seeing seven straight games of Luca definitely uh, helped with the decision of uh, knowing that he's a. <laughs> He's a, a a player who gets everybody involved, and uh, I, I like being around players like that, LeBron's and uh, Chris Paul's, and players who get their teammates involved, especially a big man. So that was definitely a, a, a selling point for me. What about from uh, just playing against them? Just from the, from the things you do, you know, defensively, did you playing against them? Did you see yourself? You know, I definitely, I definitely saw. I definitely. I don't want to say I saw a lack of rebounding and defense. I just saw that I could help a lot uh, in that um, category um, on this team. Um, definitely the rebounding and the blocking shots and uh, and as a lob threat. So, yeah. How would you describe the coaching staff here in Dallas? Uh, familiar, for me at least. Uh, I mean, it's damn near the same t uh, coaching staff I had uh, 2020 Lakers in the bubble. So, yeah, it was real familiar for me. Jamil, along those lines, I wanted to ask, you know, Jay Kidd in his time here has spoken so well about the things he learned when he was on Frank Vogel's staff. Yeah. You were there with the Lakers. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you were there with him, could you share with us what kind of bond you developed with Jay Kidd and you know, how that carries over? Um, I mean, I've always been, admired uh, Jay Kidd's demeanor and his coaching style, uh, even as an assistant coach. Uh, I like those type of coaches who, who don't get too riled up uh, and they get their point across. Um, they don't have to do too much. And uh, I've always liked those type of coaches. Those, those are the ones that, that really resonate with me. Uh, what, what, what do you mean? What is my, what was the vision, the beginning yeah, of that question? Vision, my vision? Uh, my vision expectation, I really don't have any expectations, but to play uh, my brand of basketball. Um, so every time I step on that court is uh is full speed, it's 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 high energy, it's uh getting the crowd involved, uh just making sure that I'm doing everything to make sure that my team um is in the right position to win that game, um, each and every game, every day, every time I cross those lines. And uh me personally I feel like I'm 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 the most efficient player in the league when it comes to even if it's not, not per thirty six, just 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 in, in general, I'm extremely efficient at what I do, blocking shots, rebounding, even scoring actually. So um yeah, I'm just I'm just I'm really excited. Um, 
Um, I mean, I'm extremely excited. Uh, very excited. Uh, just the way he, he, all the attention that he draws and uh, the way that this system is set up to have all the shooters around, um, it really opens, opens up the lane for uh, players like me who are dynamic at the rim. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know about the biggest difference. I just, if anything, I just like the energy. I like the energy out here. I like the people. I like the southern hospitality. I guess what we call it. Um, it's a big difference from uh, from different cities like L.A. and, and places like that. Uh, L.A. is a great city, but the people aren't as um, open arms, I guess you would say, uh, as they are in Dallas. And uh, yeah. He said, yeah, yeah, and I hold the door open, too. I'm, I'm very polite. <laughs> you talked about the, uh, being a, uh, one of the most efficient players. Number six, Bill Russell, was a pretty efficient guy back in the day. Mm -hmm. What's it mean to have his number on, on the uniform? Um, I mean, it means a lot. Uh, um, rest in peace to him. Um, but he did so much for the game. And uh, he did so much for the game on a winning aspect. He was really like one of the first definitions of a player who was all about winning. Um, and the things that he did was just truly amazing. Think about, you know, Christian brings in a Um, I feel like I feel like his game is uh I feel like the things that I could help him on his game would be uh just rim protection and uh just aggressiveness on the defensive end. On the offensive end he's he's got that down pat. He's extremely uh, aggressive. Um and and, and and getting buckets. Uh but definitely on the defensive end we all can learn from each other and uh I, I definitely could just give him a couple of pointers on that aspect, but that's about it. Fun, uh, fun, man. I, I'll just, I, if if we could play five on five instead of practice every day, I would be in heaven. Uh, I just like playing basketball, and, and basketball is just one of the one of the funnest sports in the world. And just playing, actually playing basketball, has always been one of my my my, my favorite things. Uh, I mean, it's amazing. Uh, it's an amazing feat that we, I don't think she ever thought could happen, or me either, I never thought it could happen either, um, especially 37 years later, which is crazy. It's, it's literally older than me. Um, so I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just grateful um, that my mother could lay those bricks, uh, could be the brick layer for um, her, her family and her legacy. Um, and now my, my sister was in the WNBA, um, I, I'm, I'm clearly in the NBA and I've won a gold medal after her. So, I mean, the, 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 the McGee family, the McGee brand is just uh, continuously growing. Now, speaking about your mom, how your mom feel about this, this Texas hospitality uh, here in Texas? Uh, she, she loves Texas. Yeah, she loves Texas. She loves Dallas. Um, she, she loves the city. She's out here. Uh, she'll be out here a lot this year. So, yeah. My goal at the beginning of the year is to try to win every single game. I want to go day one, 82 and 0. It's damn near impossible, but I want to do it. Like, why can't you shoot for that? So yeah, my goal every every year is to win every game um, with my brothers, uh, which is the one through 15 that that's putting this Maverick, this Dallas Mavericks jersey on. And uh, if you're not coming in with that mindset, then you're not on my side at all. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited. Uh, I mean, you always get excited to play your, your, your opposing team, especially in the starting role. So that's definitely a, uh, just because I was the backup there. So it's definitely a, a, a game that's on my checklist to where, like, oh, yeah, I got to go crazy that game. And now you're on the other side of it. Do you feel like what happened in last year's playoffs uh, could like, lead to a rivalry between 
Madison, possibly, very possibly. Uh, that was a, it was definitely a great series except that last game. Um, but yeah, it definitely could lead to a rivalry for sure. Did anyone ask you what happened in that game seven? Uh, I mean, yeah, people ask me all the time and I just tell them, I mean, you got a TV, you got two eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you saw what happened. <laughs> We lost by a lot. Hey, that's what happened. Shots weren't falling, they shots were falling. You good? Yeah. Hey, Coach, you talked about the Bulls and 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 the Not, not yet. I plan on doing it during the year, though, having those conversations with the young guys on what they're doing with their money and investments and things like that. Um, but, yeah, I haven't yet. I've only been here for a week, I believe. So, yeah, I haven't had the chance to yet.